Okay, let's talk about how to multiply square roots. And uh, specifically, we're gonna be talking about something like this example here. So we have the square root of 20 times the square root of three. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I'll just get my calculator out and uh, figure out what the square root of 20 is, and then I'll uh, take the square root of three, I'll have a, uh, some decimals, I'll multiply those decimals together, and that'll be the answer. Well, yes, technically that's kind of what we, you know, you could think of that, that's not incorrect to get a, dex, a decimal approximation, but that's not what we're talking about. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and put our calculators away. What we wanna do here is learn the properties of square roots and radicals. And then, of course, we're gonna be focused in on what we need to do when we're multiplying two square roots. And I'm gonna show you exactly what the answer here is in a second. But matter of fact, if you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section and uh, you can check your work here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for several decades. And uh, along those years, matter of fact, I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program uh, in the description of this video. But along those years, I really refined my teaching style to really explain math in a super clear and understandable way so anyone and everyone can learn this stuff and anyone and everyone can learn math. As long as you're willing to kind of study and do your part, I think I have the right instruction for you. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, definitely check out my math help program if you need assistance in mathematics. Now, um, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a college entrance exam um, or college placement or teacher certification exam. There's a ton of tests out there uh, that people have to take with math sections on it. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you gotta check out my homeschool math courses. They were just recently voted number one for middle and high school mathematics by a major homeschool publication. And if you need some math notes, I'm gonna leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get going here and learn how to multiply square roots. And um, I'm gonna deal with this problem here in just one second. I'm not gonna forget about that, but let's start this off pretty easy, okay? All right, so here we have the square root of three times the square root of two. So how do we multiply square roots? Well, this is gonna be so easy. Uh, you're gonna be like, wow, I can't believe it's this easy. Well, the square root of three times the square root of two is equal to the square root of six, okay? So square root of three times the square root of two is equal to the square root of six, but why? Well, let me go ahead and show you why. So the square root of three times the square root of two, what we did here is just put one big radical, one big square root symbol, and then these in, uh, uh, individual factors, I'm gonna write right here, okay? So this is gonna be uh, the square root of three times two. Okay, so we have a property in algebra, basically looks like this, the square root of a, times the square root of b, we can kind of formalize what's going on here, is equal to the square root of a times b, okay? So uh, you can kind of think of this property in this direction, and you can also think of it in this direction. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in just one second. But, uh, you know, again, this is, doesn't, algebra and mathematics does not have to be complicated. What happens is something as simple as this you learn a lot of little simple things and you're like, oh, that's easy, that's easy. And you just start collecting all these little procedures that are not difficult, but you know, you accumulate a lot of these things. And if you're not taking good notes and practicing, what ends up happening is students get confused, okay? So just because it's simple and easy doesn't mean that you can't make a mistake because you can very well forget this stuff if you don't follow through and practice. But let's take a look at a problem like this here. Uh, we, of course, this one is the square root of three times the square root of two, and we saw the answer is square root of six. But how about a problem like this? So we have the cube root of five, that's what this is, times the square root of two. So what is the answer? Okay, can we do this problem? Well, the answer is no, we cannot do this problem. Now, why can't we do this problem? Well, some of you might be thinking, well, does it have something to do with this little thing right there? You would be absolutely correct. This is the cube root and this is the square root. This little thing is called the index. And right here in the square root, there's a little two up there, a little uh, invisible two. And this is for another separate video, but you don't need to really know this here. But here's the thing. Uh, these numbers have to be the same. So you can't multiply a cube root and a square root, okay? But if I had the cube root of five and I wanted to multiply by the cube root of two, well, guess what? That would be the cube root of 10, 
okay? So you can definitely do that. Of course, this video is focused on square roots, but I wanted to make this clear because it's um, this is a little bit more, uh, these principles follow through in a broader sense to radicals, okay? So it doesn't always have to be square roots, but anyways, uh, just wanted to be super specific about this because you definitely may see this on one of your algebra quizzes or test. Okay, so that's it, okay? So we have the square roots, all we need to do is uh, multiply the individual factors under, under, underneath one big square root and simplify from there. So now let's go back to our original problem and uh, take a look at the square root of 20 times the square root of three. Okay, so square root of 20 times the square root of three, we're just gonna put these factors 20 times three underneath the one square root so that's gonna be equal to the square root of 60. Pretty easy stuff, right? So if you got this as your uh, answer when I asked you in the beginning, if you knew how to do this, well, then I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face. All right, let me fix that happy face up. Here we go, that's a better happy face. Nice job, okay? However, I would say um, most teachers may not give you full credit for this answer, okay? For me, because I'm a nice teacher, I'd probably give you full credit. But I, uh, I would give you a little bit of a warning, and I would say, listen, you need to simplify your final, final answers. And um, I'm actually going to be posting another separate video on this, on how to simplify square roots. So effectively, this is like getting a, um, a fraction problem correct. And let's say your final answer was 100 over 200. Okay, now, although that would be your final answer. Let's say that's correct, technically correct. Your teacher would probably get, uh, you know, upset at you if you didn't reduce your 100 over 200 to one half, okay? So it's the same thing with the square uh, with square roots. And uh, the square root of 60, we can actually simplify it, and you're going to need to know how to simplify square roots. Of course, we're talking about how to multiply square roots, but let's just take a look, quick look on how to do this. So the square root of 60... Okay, we can actually go uh, kind of pull this apart, okay? Like, in other words, undo this problem. But this time, I'm going to think of 60 as 4 times 15, okay? So I'm kind of uh, going to be factoring this number. So the square root of 60 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 5. And now I can ha break this up into two separate square roots, the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. If I asked you to do this problem right here, you would say, oh, that's the square root of... 4 times 15, which of course is the square root of 60. Okay, so remember, as I stated back over here, uh, oh, I'm sorry about that, I erased it. But let's take a look at this property again. That's the square root of A times B is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. So it, the property works in both directions, okay? So I can, um, I can separate the factors here. So just to be crystal clear about that, you want to uh, see how multiplication, where we're multiplying two square roots, you can also break it up and uh, write that in terms of its respective factors. Now, I like the square root of 4 because I can find the square root of 4. This is what we call a perfect square because the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so that's now 2 times the square root of 15, not the square root of 4 times the square root of 15. So your final answer would be 2 times the square root of 15. This is the most simplified version of this. Okay, so um, again, we're focused on how, uh, multiplying square roots, but you want to also know how to simplify square roots as well, because, you know, all this stuff you, is connected. Okay, so when you're uh, learning about square roots, you're going to have to learn how to divide square roots, multiply square roots, add, subtract, simplify, all that stuff as well. So follow through. If you didn't know that the square root of 16 is equal to this, now you know. All right, but if you got this as your final answer, then I must upgrade your nice little happy face with a good old 1981 Mohawk haircut. I grew up in Southern California, by the way, so I saw all kinds of crazy haircuts uh, out there and um, uh, hairstyles and whatnot. But that was an impressive haircut, just like your, well, I don't even know if it's a haircut, right? It's really taking your hair and standing it straight up with a lot of hairspray, which was a pretty impressive feat in and of itself. But uh, anyways, if you got this all right, then that's just as impressive as well. So nice job. But here's the deal. Um, if you didn't know how to do this, well, now you got a good introduction. Okay, don't look at this as an end-all, be-all lesson. You want to follow through 
and maybe take a look at some of my uh, more formal instruction uh, in any one of my algebra courses to really master this. But I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel. But if this particular little video helped you out, well, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, been on YouTube for 10 plus years, I have 10 plus years, I have over a thousand plus videos on my YouTube channel, basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you think you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all my content. I make it for you, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.